timely right now. So uh, the first slide, please. I can do that. <laughs> so the objectives are to understand the background and requirements of local control and accountability plans, also called LCAPs, learn how investments in wellness align with LCAP priority areas, and identify opportunities to support wellness objectives in LCAPs. And that's the most important part is kind of that third part, how we can find, find ways to support wellness objectives financially in LCAPs. So there's some big changes recently occurred in how school funding, oh, that's weird, it kind of went back. Oh, there we are. There's some changes that recently occurred in how school funding <laughs> makes its way to school districts. First, federally, oh wow, it keeps oh, going. it's moving right Stop. Down. Just stay right there. <laughs> stay right there. <laughs> First, federally, the um, ESSA or Every Student Succeeds Act um, has now replaced No Child Left Behind as a way to allocate federal dollars which is a big part of the funding many school districts receive, especially districts with higher proportions of low-income children, um, and gives more control to states on how they use the funds. You may have heard before about Title I funding and different titles of funding. That's federal funding that was you know, much more strictly um, defined as far as how school districts could use it. So with ESSA, they have more control over how they use it. The ESSA is so recent that California has not even finalized its first implementation plan. But the, and the plan is to be updated every three years. The ESSA allows districts to allocate funds for health and physical education as part of a broad course of study, as well as funding professional development for staff in those areas, as well as other educational areas. So this is one of the first times that something like um, health and physical education has really been called out. About three years ago, the state of California changed how it allocates funds to districts. And these funds include the federal money, but also additional state and local dollars. This process called Local Control Funding Formula, or LCFF, also provides more local control with the requirement that school districts demonstrate how their funding decisions align with eight priority areas identified by the state. Schools receive extra funds if they have a large enough population of three subgroups of students. And those subgroups are English language learners, low-income students, and students in foster care and they must target interventions aimed at improving the academic achievement of those subgroups. School district administrators are quick to point out that ESSA and LCFF do not necessarily provide any new funding, just more flexibility in how districts spend their funds. And on that topic, I don't know if you've been following in the news uh, paper, but February 8th and February 13th had stories about how San Diego Unified and Poway, which in reality all districts around the state, are um, having to look at how they can cut their budget <coughs> because um, Governor Brown's new budget, which was released in January, eliminates about $500 million in guaranteed funding for schools um, based on a pessimistic funding proposal. He doesn't think enough money will come in through property taxes. So obviously this could impact you know, how districts are thinking about funding um, over the next three years, which is how long you know, they have to, to put their budget out for. So that's just very important for us to be aware of as we work to advocate for um, this in LCAPs. So what is the LCAP? Under uh, local control funding formula, districts now have a new type of budgeting process, creating what is called an LCAP. Each annual LCAP budget update is for the following three years. One section of the LCAP describes how the past year's funding ended up being used and what impacts it may have had using some predefined metrics. Examples of these metrics might be test scores, attendance, um, how many children transitioned out of English as a second language, for example. Wellness metrics could include fitness test scores, school meal participation, or um, even such things as suspension rates or parent engagement, you know, how, how many parents attended particular meetings, for example. Stakeholder input on LCAP must be considered. That is an important requirement. And districts must list how they reached out to parents and other stakeholders and what input they received right in the LCAP report. Some districts list their calendar of LCAP stakeholder meetings on their websites, but districts may also solicit input at regular meetings of parent advisory committees or school site councils, which makes it more challenging for community partners to participate because we don't necessarily know when these meetings are. 
Many of these meetings are taking place right now between February and April because the deadline for districts to submit their LCAPs to the San Diego County Office of Education is June 30th. So this period is a window of opportunity to advocate to include support for wellness into these district budgets. And um, <coughs> there are some new tools to help you do that very thing. So first of all, it's important to know how districts are currently supporting wellness in their LCAPs. LCAPs are public documents, and they're actually easier to find on district websites than most wellness policies are, so that helps. So I recently did a scan of the districts in our county, 40 districts, and found that most districts include some sort of support, often in the area of social, emotional, or mental health. The amount of detail provided varies. Most often there's some dollar amount specified. If you look over in that far right column um, on the on the chart there, you can see some dollar amounts, but um, sometimes there are no dollar amounts. Most often there's a metric, meaning some sort of measurement of whether the impact um, occurred that's aligned with the expenditure, but again, not always. So here's just an example right here of what that chart looks like. Um, we're going to do a short activity with this, um, with this chart right now. So Dan, if you wouldn't mind passing that out, one per group of three, I think will probably work out the best. So what this chart is, is every, um, every school district in alphabetical order, starting with Alpine and ending up with, I think it's Warner Springs. And so obviously that's a lot of material to look at. Each LCAP can be anywhere from 15 to 70, 80, 100 pages long. So it's a lot of material to look through as well. <laughs> that's why I pulled out the wellness language from each LCAP here. So what I'd like us to do in your groups of three is if you're currently working with a district or two, take a look at those particular districts. If you aren't working with a particular district, just pick any three randomly or just ones you're interested in. And just within your group, kind of discuss what you find. And then in about five minutes, we're going to come back and each group can kind of briefly say, you know, what kind of their impression is of the types of things that were supported. Or, you know, don't be afraid to look at one that doesn't have much information at all because that gives some information to you as well about whether wellness is supported through the LCAP in that district. So I'll give you just a few minutes. Does anyone have any questions about what you're supposed to be doing? Okay, so five minutes and we'll come back. And the people on the phone, I think you have this attachment you can look as well. And you could be a group of three if you want. <laughs> all for paying such good attention to your task and so if we could go around and you could either give an overall impression or you could point out something in particular you found and you know this is one thing I do want to preface our conversation with is that all districts are doing something with wellness probably a lot of things with wellness if you take wellness as a very broad category. It's not always reflected in their LCAP, so just because a district doesn't have much written down in their LCAP doesn't mean they're not doing some great things. And so I want to point that out first, that this is just more to learn about how districts might include wellness in LCAP, not to call out any particular district for something they've done really well or not so well. So would someone like to start? Okay, Jamie? So how I've been using this document is that we're working with uh, five different districts and six <coughs> different schools and uh, recently met with all of the principals and use this document and basically what we're doing is supporting them in implementing wellness and we're able to provide some professional development for teachers, some technical assistance, some support to just help them and a lot of times they just kind of use us as well they're making us do this initially to get the buy-in but they're buying in so we've used this to show the principals this is an avenue that you can advocate for um, some are more familiar with the LCAP than others and then so I've shown them the clips that are um, that we pulled out to say here's opportunities where you could expand more on this and have a greater commitment or you know you can advocate even for your school or, or um, what you want to do and then also show them examples of some good ones because there's some where the district is definitely made a commitment to a lot of funding and very very specific uh, goals and things in there so mm -hmm. um, kind of giving them those tools to think about. 
it's great to hear how it's actually being used because this is a very new tool. So mm -hmm. thank you for the feedback. Anyone else have a comment? Am I going to have to call on people? <laughs> Oh yeah, I just wanted you to give your impression of what you saw, either something particular in a particular LCAP or just an overall impression of the, the things that um, you know looked like they were being funded or how it was written or. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so I was looking at the Canadian Council for Genocide, and so under um, like healthy nutritious meals, it says that the funding is fifty-two million dollars from the Special Reserve Fund. So that's like the, the food services is only funded by itself, like it, the reimbursement it gets from school meals. So for that to be written into LCAP, like just it, it's not getting funding from LCAP, but they still write it in because of all the money that. Yeah, that's a good question, and that's why I specifically wrote cafeteria special reserve funds because um, school district food service departments are usually kind of a separate business unit, and they are responsible for raising their own funds and spending their own funds. But the district can allot additional funds for certain things that benefit, you know, the schools, um, the, the students as a whole, even above and beyond what the, the cafeteria fund is. So yeah, they just chose to write that in, but that is um, that's funding from the federal government, but I guess it's to say that, you know, they're going to, you know, commit to provide breakfast in the classroom and things like that. They aren't necessarily required to under the National School Lunch Program. Does that seem like something that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, and, and also just to point out, this is only, I think, the third year, possibly the fourth year, that school districts are creating LCAPs. This was last year's LCAP, so this might have been only their second or third time they've ever done it. And the first year, they were given a very different template than they were given in the second or third year. And so a lot of districts are still figuring out how to fill out the form. And a lot of them had a, so many things funded the first year and then realized we can't measure all that, you know, and so they started to get much more specific and much more kind of measurable goals. So a lot of this is still a work in progress, so that's about the best answer I can give you. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you could ask that question, you know, in the, at the food service department too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's interesting. No, okay. From the phone? Sorry, Deidre. Uh, so <laughs> some of them have like money allocated, but some of them have goals that don't have any amounts. Uh, what does that mean? That means like how are they going to support that goal or? Well, what I think it means is that either they don't feel that that actually is going to cost extra money, but they want to get it in there. Um, you know, it may, ar it may already be a, st a staff person who's already paid. And so that person would implement something within their own work. But um, sometimes, you know, I wonder if there's no money attached to it, how are they going to implement that? So I think that that's an advocacy point, is that we would want to make sure that there is some funding attached, as well as a metric you know, a measure. One of the things I noticed it, when I was going through them is that uh, several districts mentioned that they wanted to improve their California fitness test, physical fitness test scores. But then I didn't see any mm -hmm. measurement of how they were going to, um, you know, there was no funding for anything related to physical education, for <coughs> example, that would then lead to that score <coughs> being improved. Mm -hmm. And so that was where there was kind of a disconnect. So that's, uh, again, something that could be, you know, brought up at a wellness committee meeting or, you know, used as an advocacy point. We'll get into advocacy in just a moment. Any other comments okay. before we move on? Yes. I was going to say, I think it's just really cool to look at it and see, I mean, the, like the culture and the priorities of the school districts, and it really stick out when you look at these things and uh, what are the, like, real needs of the community. I mean, um, just... I'm trying to boast, but just like speaking from experience, like I live in Vista and I can say like, yep, that's definitely needed. Like that's where I grew up. Those are things that are really needed. Uh, working in, I worked in Escondido Union School District and now in San Diego and it's, you know, it's like, wow, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> well, so you're saying that it's good to see that some of these things are being funded. Yeah, like those, those mm -hmm. are real needs that, you know, that are wanted from the community there and that are actually really working with the Escondido Unified School District or Union School District for the elementary, one full-time social worker, one full-time um, parent liaison, such as central parts of mm -hmm. the community there and are so extremely effective when it comes to bringing the families in and providing all of their basic needs um, and that, you know, lapses into 
um, food and wellness and mm -hmm. mental wellness and all that kind of stuff. So. Well, and, and you know, the, this is not to say that school districts weren't funding these things before. I mean, for, for the most part, a lot of these things were funded before. The difference is, is now the process is collaborative, where they're getting stakeholder in, input, parents, community members, staff, students in some cases. And the other thing is it's transparent. You know, before, how would you ever be able to even look at a budget and, and have it even make sense? And so one best practice that is another point of advocacy is that districts do something to make the very large LCAP more accessible to parents and community members. And some districts have done a, um, an executive summary or a PowerPoint. Um, some districts have done, like San Diego Unified has a user-friendly version, translated into five languages, I think. And a lot of their LCAP materials on their website are translated into several languages. Actually, I think the LCAP might only be three, but their other materials are in about five languages. And so at least translating an executive summary or some sort of, you know, easy to understand synopsis in at least English and Spanish in a lot of districts would be really key, just like with the wellness policy. Have your wellness policy summarized and translated is really important. So um, on the topic of our next slide, and thank you for your comments, everyone. On the topic of the next slide, another tool um, is this chart that shows how districts could support wellness and how each of the items aligns with the state priority areas. And you have this chart in your um, materials as well. And this was created originally, Kate may remember, the California Department of Education helped create this for an LCAP workshop we did a little over, um, a little more than a year ago. And it really does put kind of on one piece of paper all the different ways that wellness can be integrated into the eight priority areas that the state has defined. So if you look down the left-hand column, that's the eight priority areas, basic services down to school climate. And then there's just a brief description of the area. And on the right-hand side are different connections to student wellness and local school wellness policies. This list is not exhaustive. And actually, just this morning, um, a, a school nurse emailed Nina, who mm. forwarded it to me, Vanessa Forsyth, if anyone knows her from San Diego Unified. She's now at Clark Middle School. And she mentioned that nursing, school, you know, student health services is not mentioned on here. How was that, you know, how did we leave that out? Well, I'm going to fix that. But um, it, it definitely fits in so many areas, basic services, um, student achievement. There's a lot of areas where, you know, if the child's not healthy, if their medical needs aren't being met, they're not going to be able to be at school, much less learn in school. So I apologize for that oversight for nursing students <laughs> in their room especially. Um, I want to point out that just this morning I was in Lemon Grove and Angeles had created a Spanish language um, translation of this chart and the information that's on the back, which is an advocacy, kind of an advocacy guide um, to advocating for LCAP. And so we're going to get those um, ready and available for everyone. But do you want to talk a little bit about what happened this morning in Lemon Grove? Uh, sure. Um, so we have a meeting with the DILA, which is the Department of Education, and the Advisory Committee for to talk about LCAP and which ways they could uh, have input and to uh, give the input to the principals and the district. And it was really good. I think um, there was a lot of good points at that meeting. Um, one of them was that, that all the principals from our district got it together and they were able to listen to some of these points. Um, all the ELAC representatives from each school, there is six schools in Lemongrove, and each one of them was present there. So they could bring in this information to the school and share it with the other parents. Um, so we talked a little bit about how to have input and how to, uh, and all of this chart, and uh, like they just said, we translated it. and because the, the DILA and most of the people speak Spanish and one of the great things about being at that meeting was that we were able to utilize the interpretation services that the district <laughs> has. Um, very important um, and we were able to utilize the facility. So um, it was a little bit hard to get into the meeting because the, the, the superintendent 
I had some concerns about taking the time from the DILAC meeting to put that LCOP uh, information in there. Mm -hmm. And so he decided to do it right after the meeting, which I think it worked really good because all the parents could stay for to that and maybe some of the principals. And I felt that the principals uh, received the message really well and they even participated actively in, in the discussion and encouraged the parents to um, give their input. Um, I think uh, one of the things that we could work on, um, your idea was really good of have, uh, talking to them and making a letter. And there was not enough time for us to do that at mm -hmm. this particular meeting. But because of the demographic of our community, um, I went around asking after the meeting um, if they were able to give the input in getting the internet. And a few of the parents said, um, we don't know how to get into it. So that's mm -hmm. something that we could work on that actually have the work to there and get the into it. Um, most of the parents I think they'll be able to do it, but for the ones who cannot do it, uh, to be able to hear the voices in their interest, mm -hmm. that is uh, something that we can work on. Yeah, so and thank, thank you so, so much. much. <laughs> well, thank you for making it happen. And, and that work was done through the Lemon Grove Heal Zone, which is the Healthy Eating Active Living um, Kaiser funded program through mm -hmm. CHIP. Mm -hmm. And so that was really a great opportunity, as Angela said. Principals were there. One of them got up and spoke very eloquently about promoting health. He's actually on the Wellness Committee. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it seemed like there was a lot of support for that. And LCAP had been brought up before in the DLAC meeting. That is one of the places that they gather input, um, as well as the DAC, which is the District Advisory Committee, which is the English language mm -hmm. speaking parents. So, but, but it, it's almost more like, my impression is it's almost more of a presentation rather than really having a conversation about the parent's input. So there is a survey, which I guess is sent around like by email maybe, or it's an online survey. Yes. And then there's also a superintendent's blog that is online where they get input. But again, that's all for internet, you know, people that have mm -hmm. access to the internet and feel comfortable, you know, putting their information out in any language, you know. So it's, it is good to do some more grassroots um, support of the parents that have opinions, but maybe don't have um, quite the same access to expressing them. So I thought that was a, a good opportunity. So that's an example of another way to um, advocate, you know, working with an existing group. So the next, next one. So strategies. Um, how can we work to encourage a district to include support for wellness? First, become familiar with existing tools, such as these charts I just showed you. There's also some great resources available from the California Food Policy Advocate, CFPA. And this for the web link um, on the, the uh, slide. It has useful tools to advocate for nutrition specifically and includes a short PowerPoint that could be shown at a meeting, gives some great success stories of districts that have included um, wellness support in their LCAP. And this is a statewide guide, but Encinitas is actually one of the success stories. And then the guide itself that shows specifically how four nutrition-related priorities fit into LCAPs. So these tools can help you work with district wellness leads and committees as a way to provide that input or to use when you attend another type of stakeholder committee. And I'm working currently on getting a list of dates of different districts um, that are holding stakeholder committees. Sometimes they're done in a board meeting um, where they're collecting stakeholder input, but a lot of times it is just done with meetings that already exist and the information <coughs> about those meetings really only goes out to parents and staff. So there's nothing on the website for most school districts. Um, so basically, you might have to, if you are working with a district, if you're a district rep, for example, you might have to ask the wellness lead to help you figure out where you might be able to plug in for that kind of input. I really liked in Chula Vista, they have a thing, a system called Thought Exchange. It's actually an online platform that gathers feedback from all kinds of stakeholders and then lets the second step is the stakeholders then get to vote on everybody's feedback with stars <laughs> and so then they can kind of assimilate all the information and see what kind of s you know rose to the top that people are interested in so thought exchange as a platform I think is a, is a good best practice I enjoyed using it um, 
Also, as Kate found last year when she started doing this for the first time, is when you bring up the subject of wellness, you might find that other parents and partners also understand that connection with student achievement and may not have heard this brought up previously. So it's a good way to open the door to more discussion, and that's what I think we found in Lemon Grove today. So, you, uh, so it's good to know that this work is being um, done not just by this group. You know, obviously the schools and after school domain is a big mover of this at the grassroots level. Um, district reps are work group partners who serve as liaisons between district wellness leads and wellness councils. And who in this room is a district rep? Just a couple of us today? Usually there's a lot more, but yeah, just a I couple today. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Sure is, yep. And actually, you know, the um, nutrition educators with NEOP, you know, kind of serve in that role of district rep too because you're attending the wellness meetings and, and are being a liaison between this group and all the resources here as well as the resources of your own organizations. So the County of San Diego also has a Live Well San Diego School Wellness Team that's providing information and support to superintendents, so coming at it from a different level on the topics of wellness policy and how wellness can be supported through LCAPs. They created a Tools for Schools toolkit with lots of information and links to local and locally used programs, curricula, and best practices. And actually just today, it might have been this morning, um, the superintendent's roundtable that's convened by San Diego County Office of Education is chaired this year by the superintendent at Chula Vista. And he presented, Dr. Escobedo, presented binders with all this LCAP information to the superintendents of all the school districts today with encouragement for them to take a look at this and to really consider how they can invest in wellness to meet the, the eight you know, priority areas that they have, the goals that they have in those priority areas. So there's things happening at various levels and various sides that can support this. Um, the nutrition specialists and contractors with the county's nutrition education and obesity prevention program, known as NEOP, are also looking for opportunities to promote support for wellness in LCAPs through their work with school staff, parents, and wellness committees. That's what Jamie was talking about as far as with UCSD's mm -hmm. Center for Community Health, working with principals and schools. Um, so it's there, we want to make sure that they're getting the message often and that there's a consistent message out there. And the advocating for strong wellness policies, wellness policy implementation, and LCAP support is an ongoing effort. So please be sure to contact me if there's anything I can do to help you. And the next slide is my contact information. There it is. Any questions? Can you explain this nutrition education for the city prevention program a little bit? NEO. Oh, NEOP? Yeah, the, the, yeah. Ne the NEOP program, Nutrition Education Obesity Prevention, is known around the country as SNAP-ED. SNAP is basically food stamps. Uh, what is it? Uh, support? Supplemental Nutrition. Supplemental Nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Supplemental oh, okay. okay. So SNAP, it's funded by the USDA. It's a federal program that money goes through the state down to local health departments who do some of the work themselves but also can contract out to contractors to do the work. So we have in each region a nutrition um, education <coughs> specialist. Erica is the one for North, North, Coastal? North Coastal region. Okay. And then we have one in each of the six regions. I say we because I work for the county. And then UCSD Center, oh. f yeah, Center for Community Health is a major contractor doing NEOP work. And NEOP is not just in schools. It's in faith-based settings, community settings, workplaces, retail. It's, it's getting the word out to anyone who is eligible for um, food stamps for SNAP to provide education and support. And in the schools, it's actually, okay. you know, it, and in all those settings, policy systems and environmental change too, not just education. Thank you. <laughs> the long answer. <laughs> Thanks, Sheree. Kate, you were gonna make a comment? I just wanted to say, first of all, um, last year when I went out to the school districts to advocate for wellness in the health cap, um, I would have loved to have had you all sitting beside me. So um, what I found, and I've shared this before, but at these meetings, sometimes it's power in numbers. So if three of us are there to vote that wellness is a priority, sometimes that makes all the difference. So I just want to encourage you, if you're a partner, if you're for the county, if you can help to go out to school district meetings and advocate for these things, having those extra voices makes a difference. 
And then I would also just say that my experience working now in a school district is that the more that you can tie the why of why they should put these things into their LCAP to academic achievement, mm -hmm. attendance, graduation rate, um, those are the things that school districts are looking at as their main. So if you can say, this will help us um, increase our graduation rates because da 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 da, that is powerful. Um, I mm -hmm. knew that before, but now I know it a little <laughs> bit better how important that is. So if you can go out to these meetings, if you're in a position to go and um, champion some of these ideas, um, just try to keep that in mind um, because that is very powerful in, in getting more buy-in. And um, Deirdre, thank you for putting together not only this, which is gold, <laughs> but also getting the dates from the districts because the more partners that know about those dates, mm -hmm. um, maybe COI can help to coordinate to make sure that there's representation at a lot of the um, those meetings. That would be huge. Yeah, I mean, there's so few dates that I've been finding that as I find them, Jamie, um, you can attest to this. You know, I told Jamie as soon as I found out about Escondido's dates, um, because one of them is tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I said, I'm just going to reach out to people individually when I find out about them because you know, the idea of doing a big chart and sending it out, I'm just not finding as much on websites as I well, had hoped. Last year it was a UCSD school wellness intern that mm -hmm. called every district in the county Calling. Called yeah. <laughs> and, and followed up to ask one of the meetings, one of the meetings, mm -hmm. um, and made that work. So thank yeah, I'd be more than happy to take that data of any, <laughs> anyone that would like to do that. And you just call like a main office, right? Like the superintendent's office yeah, or something. Yeah, talk to Lizzie Cooper. Yeah. Um, she was going to do it last year. Okay, yeah, I'd be more than happy to take that data. And the strength in numbers, you know, just this morning in, in Lemon Grove, we had Angelus, who, and we also had um, Anita, who heads up the Heal Zone, but we also had Alma, who's the nutrition educator for East Region, who I didn't even know was going to be at the meeting. And before I even spoke, she talked about all the resources that you know she has available to come and speak to parent or student groups on nutrition education or work in schools, um, you know, on things like healthy celebration policies. And so that was a really good segue into talking about LCAP. It's like there is support out there for it. You know, so that was that was good. So thanks, Kate. Anything else on the phone? Uh, I have another, I have another question to Kate. I wanted to know if there are, um, uh, you know, when you talk about advocacy, I always like what I say, be research based. So, is there anywhere where there is like you can find the actual research? So, when you can say, you know, research tells us that school nutrition program has its academic potential, but is there anywhere where there's like, I don't know, COI has a, um, a location where they have all these um, research articles, actually, that all this information are based on? Yeah, Sheree, I'll, I'll, I'll take an answer and then I'll see if Kate has anything. The, um, the last resource that I had given and is an attachment that we have looked at previously in this group, um, and, but I don't have time to go over too much today, is the School Nutrition for Academic Success an LCAP guide, and it's from the California Food Policy Advocates. It is only on four topics related to nutrition, but one of them has to do with improving drinking water access and quality. And if you look online at that cfpa.org, just Google CFPA LCAP and it takes you to the page. They have the research that backs up this guide because this guide was all based on, you know, how, how working in school nutrition will help X, Y, and Z as far as academic achievement. So I think that you ought to be able to find a lot on that website. And just today, um, or just last week, FRAC, which is Food Research something or other, FRAC is the name, they came out with a school breakfast scorecard. So for instance, if you were going to advocate for implementing breakfast after the bell, which is one of the four topics in this guide, the FRAC school be breakfast scorecard lists by state how each state is doing as far as school breakfast. They give food service data um, for that. Also the San Diego Hunger Coalition can give data on, for instance, summer meals. Um, there's a lot of research um, out there about water, so improving drinking water access and quality. And I did want to just mention that there's been a lot in the paper recently about water at schools. I don't know if people have, mm -hmm. have heard, but 
uh, Vista made some investments in putting water stations into schools and there's principles quoted about how this is helping students. San Ysidro um, is now, has bottled water in three of their schools now because they found lead and other contaminants in one of their schools that has very old fixtures. So it's not from the water from the Otai district, it's from the, where it's coming out at the school. And so now um, Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez Fletcher has introduced legislation this week to require districts that haven't conducted voluntary testing to test for contaminants annually. This is something that could be put in LCAP. You know, water access but also water safety is something that could be funded. Mm -hmm. Right now it's voluntary, so, you know, we could put funding in there. And it just, you know, as this says, this seems reasonable to keep California kids safe and healthy, I would add. So there's, um, you know, depending on the topic, I think there's going to be different types of research, Sheree. Okay, so this CFTA.net, they actually have their research articles that this uh, booklet was based on. I believe they do. And if not, Melissa Cannon could provide you more information about the research they used. I'm sure she could. And if you need me to connect you with Melissa, just email me. I would also okay. um, check, um, check the California Local School Wellness Policy Collaborative website. Okay. Um, California Local School Wellness Policy Collaborative. Mm -hmm. And that is comprised of a lot of the state level um, agencies that are working on school wellness policies. And I, I believe they have a section on research uh, publications. And if they okay. don't. Okay, what's that? California Local? Yep. California Local School Wellness Policy Collaborative. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And then, uh, I don't know if you want to say anything about Alliance. The Alliance is starting to compile research and publications to support LCAP and um, ESSA, but we don't have anything as of yet, but as soon as we do, I'll send that over to you. Yeah, and maybe at whatever point you do, Stacy, I can create some sort of a document that actually could live maybe on the sure. COI website um, that would have CFPA and have the, a link to the local school wellness policy collaborative and a link to the alliance and say, you know, here is some research mm -hmm. to back up these, um, you know, and the, the f uh, water, water scorecard and school breakfast scorecard, like whatever types of data. I'm sure that there's many. I think that would be really helpful and like Pedro when I talk to you about like I'm promoting uh, you know regular breakfast flavored meals if I can have some research that is backing you know what I say I think and if there's a like area where we can access those actual research articles I think that would be um, really strong advocacy that's not just talk but there is mm -hmm. actually some evidence and research behind it. And I think that means a lot to school administrators too and so Sheree if you do find anything please let me know too and then we can you know get a good list. Sure. Okay I will do that. Thanks. Thank you. There's also just to, in relation to physical activity the active living research if you Google ALR and physical activity and academics they have quite a bit of even one pagers and really good uh, fact sheets on making that connection. And even if you just Google, I was trying to Google a few things, and you can even just find some stuff Googling whatever it is you type of research you want, if it's academics or fitness or whatever, fitness and food, or you might have to look for food. Yeah, I think I remember something like on a CDC website about linking wellness with academics, like a one one or two pager, yeah. um, you know, like under There's there. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's, you know, sometimes it's hard to find just the right thing you're looking for that fits your needs, so it's good to have a lot of options. I know I often use yeah. um, <coughs> a graphic that came from research that was conducted at University of Illinois, and it's on the, um, it, it shows brain, your brain activity after being at rest and then your brain activity after 20 minutes of physical activity and so you can just see it. Um, it's a great visual to use to support physical activity throughout the school day. Okay. That's University okay, of Illinois. Thank you. Cool. All right. Thank you. Well, I think we probably went a little over time, but I don't really have any project updates. We can devote the rest of the meeting to the, the COI update.